years ago, 100 years ago, people were very straightforward. They didn't mind actually saying, yeah, we're prejudiced. Nowadays, however, people would be covert. And if you didn't have disparate impact or some other sort of mechanism for smoking out covert racial discrimination, you would have to live with covert racial discrimination. Then it must be because the standard is racist. So the SAT is racist because on average, whites do better than black students. That's the disparate impact claim. And it sets up the third point. You lower or abolish the standards in order to equalize racial outcomes, i.e. you discriminate against those who do well and in favor of those who do not do as well. Or as we call it in America, affirmative action, criminal justice reform, or DEI initiatives. The disparate impact standard means equality of outcomes. The other side tonight might try to persuade you that it means something more moderate or less extreme than that, but really you should think of these two terms as being essentially synonymous. We know that just as people of color were targeted for denial of credit in the 1930s through redlining, that they were also targeted in the 2000s for reverse redlining by unscrupulous mortgage brokers who were seeking to steal home equity. Opponents of disparate impact theory would say that unless you had a mortgage broker explicitly saying, I am deliberately giving a black family a fraudulent loan, then it's no harm, no foul. I, I think that's not only wrong, but it's not how our legal system works. 